Hey guys, what's up? And today I want to talk about one of the important topics that is heavily discussed recently in medicine and in residency. It's the dirty laundry of residency or medical school or medicine in general, and it's physician burnout. But before going into details into physician burnout, I just want to tell you about myself, about my background, and why I want to mention this before going into small details of burnout. My name is Rupen. I'm an internal medicine resident in Canada. I'm finishing my internal medicine residency. I'm almost in my third year. I'm almost done. Um, I'm going to do an extra year of residency here. And I did not do med school here. I did med school school in Syria, Aleppo. And for people who never heard about Syria or Aleppo, it's a it was a great country, but unfortunately between 2010 and 2016, while I was doing my medical school there, there was, like, there was a Syrian conflict and many people suffered through it. You can search Google, you can find many images and many videos about what was going on in Syria at that time. But please, I'm not saying this to make you feel sorry about me. I'm not saying this to make you feel bad about me. No, no, not at all. Actually, if looking backward, Doing my medical school in the middle of the world was one of the best things ever happened to me. Yes, it's a great experience. I learned a lot from it. And also it made me resilient. It gave me a different perspective on what really matters in life and how to overcome difficulties. I was in Aleppo. It was the city that witnessed the most destruction um, in Syria. It was a difficult situation. I did my med school there from 2010 to 2016. There were days where I had to study under the candle. There were days I wasn't even sure I was gonna wake up the second day. We never had like clean running water and food wasn't available all the time. Going through those difficulties, I learned a lot. But I was able to finish med school. I graduated second of my class. And then I came here to Canada. I had the chance to come here and start a new life. When I came, I really loved it. I wanted to be a resident. I wanted to be a physician here. So I started applying to residency. And one of the things I remember very well when I was preparing for interviews, one of the common questions you get asked is, how would you overcome burnout? How would you face the stress? What is physician burnout? And I was like, what are they talking about? For God's sake, I just like survived the war. And they are telling me about like residency and how hard it is and how you can like manage burnout. Like, what is this like burnout? I never heard about it. I studied six years. I studied very hard. I never took a vacation. And I said, okay, so I'm just gonna read about it. I started reading about burnout and like, it looks like it was like a, a syndrome. It was like a complex of many things that can happen to a physician or a resident or a student like they can suffer emotionally they can feel that they don't have the motivation to work they can overeat they can drive fast they can spend money and like many many things so i was like okay so that is what that's what people talk about and call it burnout i was okay so that's burnout and if the people ask me how i'm going to overcome burnout i'm just going to say i survived the war look like i can survive residency it's not hard and that's what I bragged about in my interviews. That's what I talked about in my interviews. I was like, when people ask me about burnout and what would I do to overcome stress? Yes, I had my strategies. I had my family, I had my friends, I had my hobbies, but I was like, like, bro, I will never get burned out. Like, this is not a thing for me. I just like survived the war. I was so overconfident. And like, I still remember very well, one of the people interviewed me, he said like, don't think you're immune. And I didn't believe him. And that was my mistake. And after three months in the residency, I started experiencing those symptoms. There were days where I would come home, I would feel like I have no energy to do anything. I would avoid going to see my friends or family. My main focus was work, 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 work. I was drained to work. I didn't enjoy things outside of life. I stopped eating healthy. I stopped exercising, although that's not me. I changed and then I realized like, yes, that's what people call burnout. And over the last three years, I experienced burnout here and there. And I learned how to overcome burnout. That's why I created those video, this video. That's why I want to talk to people who are on the other side of the camera 
If you're experiencing burnout, you're not by yourself. I survived the war, I went through hell, I can say, and despite this, I still experience burnout. Okay, so let's talk. What is burnout? Burnout is a group of symptoms you can experience, whether it's emotional or physical. You can experience lack of motivation, lack, lack of motivation, lack of empathy, uh, lack of the, the love, that the, the interest that you want to go to work, that that disappears. You just go there because like you have to. You are not really happy to be in the hospital. You're not really happy to be in work. Some people might experience symptoms like overeating, driving fast, overspending, going to shopping, over drinking, alcohol. Different people experience different things. Some people experience the lack of empathy toward their patients. Patients become only numbers. Patients become only symptoms. You can't really connect with them. You just go and tell a patient they have a cancer and you just move on without like knowing that you just told someone the word C. So there are many ways people experience burnout. You can search online, you're gonna find enormous articles. And unfortunately, some resident committed suicide, some medical student committed suicide, and there are TED talks about it. My theory about burnout is we all have an emotional tank. We all have like a tank, we have a capacity. And this represents how much emotions and empathy and energy we can give to people around us. When you go to work, you see your patients, they are sick, you empathize with them, you feel bad for them. You might see in one of them yourself, you might see in one of them your family. So all these events take part of your emotion, take part of your well-being. Because as a human being, you cannot see another human being who's suffering and cannot empathize with them, cannot feel bad for them, no matter, even if you know them for a couple of minutes. If you tell someone that they have cancer, that is going to touch you in one way or another. At the end of the day, we all have some capacity and day by day, when you see patients, when you see people, when you see your friend, when you go to the hospital, you are giving part of your emotional well-being. You are being, or let's say you are giving part of your emotions and that thing is going to end. And that's when it's important for you to know your capacity, to know your limit, to know when you cannot give anymore. When you have to stop and just take a vacation, take a couple of days off and enjoy life. And that comes with experience. You have to be aware of those symptoms and you have to be your own physician, you have to be your own guidance and know how long does it take you to experience those symptoms. And different rotations might have different weight on you. If you are doing like a critical care rotations, you might feel more tired because you are, doing, you are dealing more with critical patients versus if you are doing something as an outpatient and things are more easier, uh, more on the chill side. If, let, let, for example, if you are doing like diabetes connect, you still might experience burnout on the long run. I'm not saying that patients or physicians who deal with diabetes, they won't, but I think it's more likely to experience burnout if you're in the critical care versus if you're in endocrinology. Again, I might be mistaken, but that is true for me. Okay, so that is burnout in a nutshell. Why I'm talking about it? Because like, I want to make sure that people who are starting the residency are aware of these symptoms. And I want to make sure at least you book a couple of vacations in your residency and plan to do things in those vacations. Don't just like book some vacations here and there and end up staying home. Book a vacation, book it to do something, do something that you like. So this is one. Two, stay connected with your family and friends. No matter how hard it gets, even if you have like a couple of research projects you are working on, if you have an exam, try to go out at least once a week with your friends. Try to go out at least once a week and go and see your family. 
It is really important. Being connected with other people is important for you to fill up your emotional tank. Three, keep doing the things that you like. Being in medicine does not mean that you should not have life outside of medicine. And this is really important. For people who follow me on Instagram, you're going to notice that every day I post a story on Instagram about my exercise routine. And for me, it's been exercise. Exercise has a huge effect on me, and I believe it is. it does have a huge effect on many, many people. And that's what kept me sane through residency. I, don't, I love medicine. Medicine is the best job in the world. But if I want to enjoy medicine, I have to enjoy life outside of medicine. And for me, it's been exercise. Waking up in the morning, going to the gym, seeing people exercising, pumping up the blood in my brain, to my brain, increasing my heart rate, makes me feel happy. But different people might not experience the same effect with exercise. Some people might like to play piano, let's say. Some people might like to draw. So whatever you are doing, keep doing those things in residency. If you want to really ace your residency, if you want to be a really good physician, you have to be a good human being outside of medicine. You have to take care of yourself outside of medicine to make sure you are taking care of your patients. And finally, one of the important things that you're going to learn about residency, you should guide others. Usually, in residency programs, you take the junior role and you take the senior role. When you're a senior resident, make sure to take care of your juniors. Make sure to take care of the medical students in your team. Make sure to send them home early. And if one of them is not performing well, don't assume that they don't like the rotation. Don't assume they are just lazy. Go and talk to them. Figure out what's going on. Because I can say from my own experience, there are many times where I did mistakes, not because I don't like medicine. No, I love medicine. Medicine was the reason I survived a war but because I was tired, I was exhausted, I was overwhelmed. I was tired of being on call 26 hours in a row for a couple of days or like two or three days back to back. So when you're a senior resident, make sure to take care of the well-being of your juniors, whether they are, they are junior residents or medical students and help others through their burnouts.